Wow. Wow. That was my actual verbal response when I walked into this room was, wow. Four Seasons started uh, in the 1960s by a Canadian hotelier. I think his name was like Isidore Sharp. He started the business back then with a little motor lodge in uh, Toronto, I think it was. And he opened a two-story hotel. In fact, the hotel brand is still headquarters in Canada, even though 95% of the business itself is now owned by Bill Gates through Cascade Investments and also a Saudi royal. Al Walid, I think his name was. Four Seasons operates um, a little over 100 properties throughout the world. They are a true five-star management brand. They don't actually own any of the properties. This is very common in uh, luxury hotel management. The management company is separate from the actual owners of the property itself. This is the management company and they take not only um, a cut of the gross revenue, but also a cut of the profits. looks like a shark or something, but if you look inside, it's actually like a dragon. This room definitely has a wow factor. Let's explore the room together. Now remember, this is an older hotel. It was opened in 2013, I believe. Only about 266 rooms total. And looking at the way the rooms are situated throughout the building, I don't think any two are alike. They vary in different sizes and shapes, but this one is quite lovely. I was upgraded to a suite and I'm blown away. I really am. Um, good job, Four Seasons. This is what you're greeted with when you first enter into the room. So awesome. We have to start over here with the workstation. I love it. It's this gigantic desk. For a hotel, this is a huge desk. And I love the mirrored walls here. It just extends the room even further. Everything is clean and very, very classy. I'm not usually a big fan of artwork and little alcoves like this, but for some reason it works. I mean, it's it would be an empty space. I don't know what you would use it for, but uh, here it, it works. And the fact that it's there and not some bookshelf with a bunch of books that's very busy, it gives it a sense of elegance. Now this chair is my only concern. <laughs> when I sit in business chairs, I like super, super comfortable because I spend a lot of time here and adjustable and I like armrests. That's just me personally, that's my taste. I mean, that's the challenge with all hotels is they have to try to appeal to a wide range of tastes. Now this chair, it, uh, it doesn't, it's, uh, it's not my favorite. It's a little bit hard. Um, I feel like I'm gonna slide out of it, but I love the seating position for the entire room. I feel like I'm a boss here. Take a look at this. This leather piece right here, it almost looks brand new. I mean, there's not a single piece of dirt or any kind of scratch on it. To the left, it's not an L-shaped desk, but it is kind of an auxiliary table, a little bit lower. I really like it. It's something that you can place your drinks on because it's a marble top and it's got all the switch gear you can want. What looks to be some kind of compendium. It is in Chinese and in English. Uh, Eight Wonders of Shenzhen, Shenzhen After Dark. It just gives you a general overview of the hotel and the surrounding area. Some of the classes that they offer here, they have a spa, tai chi, yoga, swimming classes. Couple bars, couple restaurants. But of course, you're in the middle of Futian. I mean, this is like the heart of Shenzhen. You can eat here at the hotel if you want, but you are surrounded by some of the best food choices in the entire country. I've never seen this in a hotel in the last year, year and a half. This is the first time I've actually seen a little sanitary kit. It's got hand sanitizer that you can take to go, wipes and face mask. Nice little touch, looking out for you. The color choice is this dark, very durable kind of, of uh, wallpaper that I really like, but it adds 
a nice contrast to the wood, the wood paneling, which you have on the right-hand side of the wall. Again, pieces of art like this kind of um, don't do it for me necessarily, but on this wall it works because it's just mm, minimalistic. Next, we have to talk about the sitting area, which I love. I mean, I love the shape of the couch. It's perfect for sitting, having meetings, something a little different with a circular coffee table. It just goes together and then you add a splash of this blue color on the wall. That is the wow factor. And look, they are welcoming me. Wow, look at that. I don't know how long it takes to put something like this together, but man. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy this. Fresh fruits and Pellegrino. A wonderful personalized note welcoming me to the hotel. They really outdid themselves here. I love sitting here. This is so comfortable. I can work, I can watch TV, I can have the news on while I sit at the desk and edit my videos and, and just do random work that I have a lot to do over the next couple days. I feel at home here. Mostly because this area has got a nice little separation from the bedroom area. The separation is this frosted glass, which is not movable. It is fixed in place. And then it leads you into the bedroom. I love how they have that separation. Everything about it, the backsplash, I love the contrast between the floors and the walls. And notice this, real flowers. These are real, not wilted. Makes the whole room smell great. And it overlooks the city of Shenzhen. It is a rainy day, so unfortunately there is a storm. We are fighting a typhoon in Shenzhen today. To the left is kind of the Shenzhen Civic Center. Uh, then you have this building here, that's the Sheraton. Across from this little park mall-like thing, that is the Ritz-Carlton. And then there, is the exhibition center. Now, this is true. A few years ago, I actually lived in this district for about a month. I stayed in a hotel located right here. Same building as the Ritz-Carlton, but a completely different hotel. You can watch that video here. It was a terrible, terrible hotel. Because I was doing some work in some of these offices here for about a month, but that hotel was so bad, I actually had to go a couple blocks to the east and find a different hotel to live in for a month. This area was my home for about one month, eh, about three years ago. This whole area, the Futian district, just has so much life and tenacity to it. Time for the bed comfort test. It's not too soft and not too hard. It's just about right. And there's so many pillows. There's, what, six, six pillows on this bed. I'm all alone here. How the hell am I gonna use six pillows? <laughs> it's as if hotels need to one-up themselves. The next five star I stay in will probably have like eight. Let's try this chair here. Oh, the chair is actually pretty good, man. It's a nice little reading. Chair got a nice view out the window. The furniture isn't new, but that's okay because it's been kept in great condition. The carpets are super clean. It's got a pleasant smell. No smoking allowed in this hotel. Do not smoke in hotels like this. Even though a lot of the furniture is a little bit old, the room is tied together so nicely because there's very little uniformity. The uniformity I do see in some of the cabinet pieces, but everything else you can change out. You can change out the lamp fixtures, you can change out the desk, you can change out the uh, the coffee tables and put in something a little bit more modern and it would still flow nicely together. Here's something I need to point out. Just a standard little nightstand. Notice though how the lamp is a little bit too the, it's not quite centered, you know, it's off to the side a little bit. That's because you have the alarm clock, the Bose speaker, but it's just off to the side a little bit. That is done on purpose. And then you go to the other side here, and it's not centered here either. It's just off to the side in the exact same spot because you have the phone. That is all done on purpose. There's actually SOPs that govern where everything is supposed to go on the nightstand. It's not cluttered. It's nicely positioned. Same thing here. There's an SOP for everything to be perfectly situated and placed in relationship to everything else on this tray. You can see here, three complimentary waters, a nicely displayed mini bar, price list. You got coffee mugs, tea mugs, a tea set, everything you need. Let's take a look at the private mini bar and 
you know, not bad. It's pretty well stocked. I've been in some five stars that just give you like a bag of chips and one beer. So of course the prices are very expensive. Lots of channels to choose from. Very standard for five star hotels here in China. All the CCTV, the local channels, of course, but it also has uh, some international channels. It's got Russia Today, it's got CNN, it's got the TVB Pearl and Jade, HBO Cinemax, Star. Wow, they got a lot. Awesomeness. But wait, I haven't even showed you the closet in the bathroom yet. This room is huge. So much space. Okay, so here you can stick your bags and whatnot. You've got slippers down here, all the amenities here for laundry, full closet. More place to put baggage up there, up there. So many hangers. Something that people don't realize is so important if you're staying long-term in a hotel. An umbrella, but no iron and ironing board. That's a fail, unfortunately. Business hotels should always have an iron and an ironing board ready to go. I know they're difficult to maintain by the housekeeping department because oftentimes people leave the water and the iron and it drips out and it ruins your next guest clothes and stuff. So you have to be very careful with it. But it being the four seasons, all I gotta do is call down to the front desk and say, hey, can you send one up? Build someone up. And even more space. Moving on to the bathroom. Not quite the wow factor of the living room, but still very nice. Are you kidding me? These are kind of standard affair. Bathroom has, look at this, an electric toilet seat. That should be standard in all five-star hotels. If a five-star hotel does not have this, it's not a five-star hotel, in my personal opinion. Ceiling rainfall shower, very standard. Of course, the centerpiece is this giant bathtub here overlooking the city. Pretty standard uh, affair for the vanities. You got hers and his, and you can tell which one's which because here you have a lady's comb, and over here you have a men's comb. Very high end. Notice also a remote for the TV that's located behind this mirror. A bathroom of this size, separated from the rest of the room, will give you plenty of privacy, including the toilet area and the shower has their own doors. But if you have a meeting or something, you can close it off to the rest of the room. Look at the wide, wide hallways. There is a friendly rivalry between Four Seasons and Ritz-Carlton. I've worked for both, actually, and they're both fantastic companies. There's a lot of similarities in terms of management styles uh, for these companies and the way they treat their employees. Uh, in fact, many of the managers and longtime workers in hospitality will interchange between Four Seasons and Ritz-Carlton back and forth because they are so interchangeable. Just to give you an idea, just on the other side of the property here is the Ritz-Carlton. So in a lot of markets, you will see both a Four Seasons and a Ritz-Carlton in direct competition with one another. But amongst hospitality professionals, I truly believe this is a friendly rivalry. Where these two companies differentiate themselves is really the designs of the hotels, whereas Ritz-Carlton tries to have some kind of uniformity throughout their properties around the world a lot of that royal blue and their, their branding is very very important four seasons takes a different approach in their designs in fact they work with the owners in the building of the properties to have more of a local flair so here in china you're going to see a lot more of a chinese flair if you're in uh, the middle east you're going to see more of a middle east flair to their properties there is a lot of debate about which approach actually creates more brand loyalty but to be honest with you, both brands are doing quite well. Yeah, these are not inexpensive places to stay. But the level of service that you get at a property like this, and I'm not just talking about, you know, helping you with your luggage or eating in the restaurant. I'm talking about the housekeeping staff, the security staff, the management, the young lady playing the piano in the lobby. These are truly professional, high-end hospitality people. And let's not forget world-class food. Breakfast is in a lovely setting, and of course, the service is fantastic. I mean, I really enjoy these giant <laughs> corridors. It's kind of traditional with the marble and everything and the stonework, but lashed onto the walls are very vibrant murals. 
with all kinds of color. Super, super modern. I love this. Now it's time to check out the gym and the swimming pool. I got a salon. The gym here is very complete. Free weights, lots of cardio, good size. The men's center is a very complete dry sauna, wet sauna. There's even a hot tub, which I love. The hot tub sounds great. And it's the first time I've seen a hot tub actually filled and heated, but it's too hot. It burned my legs. One of the unique things about this particular property is on the first floor, they've got an art museum. Wow. Give you an idea how big that is. I mean, that's very big. 